Third and 15 into the nickel. And it's intercepted and picked off by White. Devin White gets the ball. Ingram brings him down. Another turnover for the quarterback, Trevor Lawrence. On a week where they told us they've got to take care of the football and protect it, the first drive, third and 15, interception. Oh, my goodness. It was going to be one of those days for the Jags, Brent. Yeah, and you know what? The offense is a major problem, but the defense, where did they go? Baker Mayfield just made a lot of money. Mike Evans catching more touchdowns. Not a lot of resistance on the defensive side of the ball. So offense not good, defense not good, and... Ah, the kicker's missing kicks. Oh, boy. We got a lot of problems. It's a Tuesday night therapy session here from Sneakers in Jack's Beach. This is the Action Sports Jags, Jags Report Live. Coming to you live from Sneakers. Sponsored by Farrah and Farrah, the exclusive injury law firm of the Jaguars. Thoughts oh, is frustrating. Uh, it's, really, it's really embarrassing and frustrating. And you put a lot of work in to do that and to look like you don't even practice. I mean, that's what it looks like, which is, you know, you got to call it like you see it sometimes. I mean, it's, it's bad all the way around. That's kind of what I like about Trevor Lawrence, amongst many other things, is that he sounded like a fan at the podium. <laughs> I yeah. mean, he can really relate. You would have said the same exact things on Sunday. Trevor saw it kind of like you saw it. Yeah, and we're going to welcome you to Sneakers. we got some work to do tonight. we got 60 minutes to try to figure this thing out. The Jags suddenly have lost four in a row. It's unbelievable to me to think that at the beginning of December we were playing for the number one seed, Brent, and now here we are barely hanging on, somehow still in the fourth slot in the AFC. Don't ask me how. Don't know if we deserve it. But I will continue to say I think it's vitally important for this franchise for somehow, some way to win this AFC South this year. I don't know that they can. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I don't have confidence that they will beat Carolina on Sunday. Yeah, I we don't. Sp we spent a lot of the last couple of days with the blame game on social yeah. media or on other shows and on this show as well. Uh, bulky. Peterson, coaching staff, players, quarterback. But those same folks were all 8-3. and three. Yeah. Earlier this month, they were 8-3. and three. How did it get so bad? And I agree with you. If they lose to the Carolina Panthers, you might be able to chalk it up as the worst loss in franchise history. And I'll go another step. If they don't make the playoffs this year and it slips away, look, it happened to Tennessee last year. It did not get fixed for them this year. In the end, you are what you are. And if they go eight and nine and they lose their last six, that does not bode well going forward into next season either. Well, what's not helping is the quarterback is continuously banged up. He's certainly not 100%. No. The latest one, a shoulder on this play, fourth and one. You can't fault the effort, the toughness, the want to, anything on Trevor Lawrence. But he's a little bit broken down now uh, with his body. This is an AC joint sprain in the right. shoulder. But that's usually a tolerance type of deal. But he's a quarterback. He's got to throw with that shoulder. And so that's something to watch all week. He will be on the practice field, according to Doug Peterson, this week, but maybe not tomorrow. Trevor's uh, uh, progressing, obviously. Um, you know, he, he's a little bit sore, but um, uh, doing doing better today than he did yesterday, and and um, may do a little something tomorrow, but but I, I, I would doubt that tomorrow a little bit too soon. But uh, we'll, we'll see as the day as the week goes on. It's a weird question to ask, right? Yeah. Uh, are the Jags better off not playing Trevor Lawrence right now, maybe for his long-term health or maybe for their short-term success? I, I have an opinion on that. It's beneficial for – it might be beneficial for Trevor to not play. It is not beneficial for the Jaguars for Trevor to not play. Listen, Trevor Lawrence is our guy, right? And Trevor Lawrence is – we can win with Trevor Lawrence. And I know a lot of fans are going crazy and, oh, we should give CJ – no, we shouldn't. Yeah. C.J. Beathard's the backup for a reason. I'm not down on C.J. Beathard. You get a backup quarterback to win you a game if you need to win a game, and hopefully he can. We saw it a little bit with Gardner Minshew this weekend. In the end, Gardner Minshew proved you know, he couldn't quite get it done, couldn't quite get him over the hump. So, And, and there are other examples yeah, of Browning that. Browning started that a little bit, yeah. right? Yeah. Other quarterbacks The Bengals that. kid. I mean, so we go down the list of backup quarterbacks. You get a backup quarterback, you want him to win you a football game. But 
the Jaguars need Trevor Lawrence and they need him to play well. Well, I'll just simply put it like this. At home or right here at Sneakers in Jack's Beach, you ask yourself if you're the head coach for this football game yeah. and you have a choice to play a cleared and ready to play, even if banged up Trevor Lawrence yes. or C.J. Beathard, who are you playing? Right. You're playing Trevor Lawrence, there's with, no question about it. With that said, there's no denying Trevor is not playing his best football. And he's had a disappointing season, man. He's got 19 touchdowns and 12 picks. Nobody saw this coming. We thought we were going to have the Trevor from the second half of his second season when he threw 15 touchdowns and had only two picks. I don't know why. Part of it is mental. Part of it is physical. He's banged up. The offensive line stinks. They can't communicate with the receivers. I don't know why that's a problem here in week 17 or 18 or whatever the heck week we're in. There's just two. They can't run the ball, which means he's got to force the ball down the field. He's throwing picks on third and 15. Shoot, the first three drives, Brent, third and 12, third and 15, third and 20. Yeah, I mean, what the blazes, Well, there's man. not a lot of answers in the NFL when you have those kind of situations. Yeah. And by the way, he's a frustrated player right now. I think you heard that post game and Trevor Lawrence one thing we found out frustrated Trevor doesn't equal good Trevor yeah he makes some mistakes when he's pressing and trying to be the guy making plays instead of just taking his medicine the the fumble again drives me nuts I mean he knows better there's no way that can happen he saw the blitz coming he had guys he open. had Evan Ingram wide open yeah. and yet he pulled the ball back in I he's don't know why shy. he did it he reminded me Sunday a little bit of the Urban Meyer Trevor yeah he double clutched a play yeah. even Elijah Cooks yeah he, he does not look – he's a lot like this football team. They don't look confident right now in anything they're doing. And that includes on defense. This is a defense that wasn't supposed to do unbelievable things. Right. But they exceeded expectations. Ooh. And now all of a sudden – and they've been shredded by Baker Mayfield, Jake Browning, Joe Flacco. Their best performance was actually against maybe MVP Lamar Jackson this yeah. month. I, I think this – you know, They can't when, tackle either, Dan. They oh, missed yes. 15 tackles. Yeah. And, and there's two things about the Jags defense. We kept saying, hey, they're better than expected. They're better than expected. And I came out and said, well, no, they're good. They weren't good. They weren't you know what good. they were? They're getting turnovers, Brent, and yeah. those have gone away. And when you get turnovers, it helps you so much, and they don't get those turnovers anymore. And then you got guys, I don't know the injury status, but Tyson Campbell clearly is not the Tyson Campbell that we've seen. He came back into the lineup. Andre Sisco, not the Andre Sisco that we've seen. So I don't know if it's just they're beat up. It's a long season, but the guys are not playing well at all, and the missed tackles are just mind-boggling because they were good at it throughout the first half of the season. The second half of the season, they can't stop the run either. Yeah, I don't think there's a lot they trust on either side of the ball. And I know this, Doug Peterson can't trust the kicker. Oh, no. Brandon McManus has missed five out of six kicks. Oh, boy. This is another one. Like, if you go back to the two, first two-thirds of the season when they yeah. were eight and three, he yeah. was awesome. Yeah. Like, he was money, man. And now he can't make it. Those are, those are game changers, oh, too, Brent. Yeah. I mean, confidence, you, yeah, killers. Uh, listen, and, and people could say, well, they're long kicks. Well, the Dolphins kicker had three long kicks on Sunday, 50 plus, three, 57, 54, 52. Nailed every one of them, man. It's just inexcusable. The kickers, I'm sorry, it's a tough business. You got one job. They worked Matthew Wright out today. I don't know it, if they're going to make a change, but you got one job. You got to make the kicks. Yeah, I hear from uh, Doug Peterson now on, well, a lot of Jags problems. <laughs> You know, everything's still right in front of us. Got a great opportunity this week, um, you know, to, to just go 1-0, and 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 that's our goal. I think you got to keep that in perspective. But, the, you know, the bottom line, too, is we just got to – we got to play better. Uh, we didn't we didn't play good, you know, um, on Sunday. It's time for the Game Plan, sponsored by EverBank. Advantage you. Make the most of your money at everbank.com slash Jaguars. Well, here's the game plan. And just win, baby. But how do you do it? Like, yeah. And really, we're out of answers. I'm sure they're kind of searching for answers. They would do it. I say find a spark. I don't know what that means, really. Yeah. I mean, is it Jamal Agnew, who's a spark plug guy? Is it just somebody making a play? Yes. Somebody make a play, and then you can build off that. The problem is, Dan, they are not making plays early in games, and I think it's killing their confidence. I think we've criticized everybody but the coaches yet, and that's still to come. But, I mean, Doug Peterson last week was a big week, and they looked absolutely terrible yeah. against the Bucks. I mean, what happened to the Doug Peterson who pushed all the right buttons last season? I mean, we've kind of lost sight of him over these last last four games. The NFL is a tough business, man. It is a tough business, but somebody, because there's nobody else is going to help, and nobody feels sorry for them. They don't care, and Carolina's going to come in here. 
They played their best game of the year. Bryce Young threw for 300 plus yards. You think DJ Chark wants to come down here and stick it to the Jags? Of course he does. Adam Thielen, of course he does. These guys are going to come down here and play their best game. And if somebody on this football team, somebody, anybody, doesn't step up and make a play, they're going to lose to Carolina. Yeah, Spark uh, might be the Carolina Panthers because they have two wins. And that is maybe a little bit of breathing room or hope for everybody out there or here uh, for the Jags. The four losses here in December have come against teams that are 14 and 2 this month. Okay. They're hot teams. Okay. The next two opponents are 2 and 6 okay. this month. So there's a little bit of life with the schedule loosens up maybe. I mean, this has all collided at the same time the Jags have played inconsistent football. Yeah. You really just don't know what to buy into. I go back to two weeks ago. The defense played well for about three quarters against yeah. the Ravens, yeah. who just shredded the Niners. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's in there, Dan. It's more about tapping into it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I <laughs> wonder. Uh, in the end, maybe we got ahead of ourselves when they were 8-3 and three and playing for the top seed. You know, when we look back... Not our fault, by the way. They're 8-3 playing for the top seed yeah. on Monday Night Football. Sure, we're pumped up. <laughs> but maybe when we look back, they're more like the same team that we had a year ago. In the end, Brent, they didn't do a lot in the offseason to improve the football team. Certainly, the draft class didn't help. They lost a couple key guys in free agency and Jawan Taylor and Arden Key. And it just... Maybe they're about the same as where they were a year ago. Maybe we look up at the end and they're 9-8 and eight again. Yeah, I think uh, injuries have plagued them a little bit, but I don't like the injury excuse in the NFL because no. a lot of teams are overcoming oh, no, them. No, no, I can't. think this is poor play. So I go to making plays or pressing to make plays. Maybe yes. they're just not performing well because they're pressing right now. There's just too many guys playing bad football. Yeah. And I know you want to make a play, and I get it. I think this is Trevor's problem above all. Yeah. He's trying to make up for a lot of indeficiencies right now, on, uh, or deficiencies on offense, and it's just making matters worse. Well, one guy who's definitely pressing is the quarterback. There's no question about that. He's got to play free. I don't, I don't know it's too much going on in his head. It's just been, like I said, it's been a, been a tough year for the kid. And, and, and 19 and 12 is not what we expected. He's thrown for 3,700 yards, you know, but he's got to play better. And, like, he's got to be the one guy who says, all right, guys, climb on board. We're going to win this football game on this Sunday. We're going one play at a time. We're going to go down the field here. We're going to score a touchdown. We're going to take the lead. We're going to play from ahead. I need to run the ball a little bit better. I need you boys. You know, the one thing we haven't seen from Trevor yet, and I don't know if it's going to come because I don't know if this is who he is. And a lot of people were talking about this the other day yesterday Patrick Mahomes right you watched him screaming at his offensive lineman in a good way yeah, yeah. on the sideline trying to get him going you yeah. know and and I don't know that Trevor's that kind of leader but I don't know if we need to see something like that from him maybe to get that spark that you're talking about I would say this though I saw that you saw that we like to see that from the outside looking in it didn't make a difference for it Kansas didn't. City it did they did that what time is it by the way here on the show what time is what time it, is it? 7, 7 12? 12? Well, we'll finally get to the first positive thing here on the show. Oh, you got something? Yeah. Okay. Power Play of the Week, sponsored by IBEW Local 177, powering Jacksonville since 1912. This is for all you Trayvon Walker haters, right? I mean, sack number seven oh or God. number 44. Listen, we got a power play, man. There wasn't a lot to pick from. You're telling me this is a positive of the week? That's positive I mean, of the week. I mean, this happened in junk time. This is like, hey, Calvin Ridley had five catches for 90 <laughs> yards and two touchdowns. You know what he had? Zero for zero, zero at halftime. Yeah. That's what Trayvon Walker had. Fellas, I'm sorry, Brent. I'm being mean to you. I shouldn't, I'm not picking on you, but my gosh, I mean, this is a power play? This is a, see, this I think actually sums everything up. <laughs> they, they kept have missing two them. Missed tackles. Yeah, they kept missing the same them. play, they get a sack. Get the guy down. Tack it's Baker Mayfield. Yeah. It's not Lamar Jackson. Yeah. Hey, but here's, listen, if you're a Trayvon <laughs> defender, I think you'll like this. Okay. He's doubled his sack total. Okay. And they keep telling us he makes bigger plays than everybody else even yeah. sees. But double sack. Hutchinson, he now has more than Hutch. All right. And I know you're going to tell me Hutch wrecks more games than he does. But they actually have a good tandem with him and Josh Allen. They're one of the best tandems in the NFL sack number wise. Okay. I like what you're doing. Do you want Kayvon Thibodeau instead of any of the other guys? Can I, can I jump in here and keep it real sure. for just a second? The Jags are 28th in the NFL in sacks. Yeah. 28th. Okay. And I like Trayvon Walker. He's a good football player. He should move inside, and the Jags should have 
like we all said, got an edge rusher in the offseason like Leonard Floyd, and if you had Leonard Floyd and Josh Allen and Trayvon Walker, then you would have been hell-bent on destroying the quarterback of the other team. Yeah. And I don't know why they didn't do that, but that was a big mistake by the, this football team, in my opinion. Ten and a half sacks what do for I Leonard know, Floyd, ten and a half sacks. Jadavion Clowney has seven and a half sacks. Davion Clowney was in the building, Brent. And by the in way, the, building. the interior of the defensive line has not performed to what they thought it would. They miscalculated that as well. Also I think the true. edge guys, Trayvon and Josh, have played well. Yes. I think the interior hasn't performed to their liking. Hey, all this, all the negativity here on Jags Report Live from yes. Sneakers in Jags Beach, and the Jags still have a chance, like a good one. They actually lead the division. No way. Control their own fate. You're lying. All the scenarios. They can clinch a playoff berth this week in Get front out. of the home fans. You're a lie. That means they got to win at home, though. They've <laughs> lost five times at home, Brent. Uh, we'll talk about it when we come back <laughs> right here on Fox 30. I am a show killer. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> This is the Action Sports Jags, Jags Report Live. Coming to you live from Sneakers. Sponsored by Farrah and Farrah, the exclusive injury law firm of the Jaguars. We've got to do a better job at taking care of the football. It's not about the plays. It's not about all the, you know, we've got to tackle better and we got to take care of the football. Bottom line, we do those two things. Those give us a chance to win football games. That was a question for Doug Peterson about maybe taking over the play calling just to provide a spark to this football team. And that isn't happening in Jacksonville as we welcome you back here to Jags Report Live and deck the chairs. Oh, that's beautiful. A what a wonderful holiday. time of the year. Yeah, Did everybody have a great Christmas? I hope so. Hope How was so. yours, Fred? <laughs> it was okay. It was just okay? Just holding people off on social media. What was your best gift that you got from your family, Brent? Hmm. What did you get from from the Martino twins. What did they bring you? Uh, did they bring you I Christmas got a, I got cheer? A cup. I got a, a nice little coffee mug for uh, mug. Flagler and uh, Daytona State where they're See, headed to college. Thoughtful. So there you go. That was yeah, nice, by Very them. thoughtful gift. Yeah. Wonderful. Had to be Kaylee. Couldn't have been Ty. No. Uh, welcome back to Jags Report Live. <laughs> Brent Martino, Dan Hicken. We're pulling at strings, <laughs> man. It's Christmas time. I'm trying to be happy. I, yeah, you have to work hard <laughs> at it, too. <laughs> Should the Jaguars... I, I said yesterday on, on social media, I'm sorry, I'm going off at a tangent, but the Chiefs game was like half filled right yeah yeah and so i'm like hey i just it's, you know because jacksonville always gets hammered on when we, we don't have people in the stands or there's other teams there so i go oh look at this stadium these are the defending super bowl champs i don't care that it's christmas man you would have thought i said something egregious i mean oh dan it's Chris. settle down trolls it's okay <laughs> yeah. social Please. media is a dangerous place dangerous. much friendlier here at sneakers in jack's beach <laughs> uh we'll be back on the monday schedule the next couple of weeks um as well real quick before we get to must win mode for yes. the Jags. Yes. Press Taylor getting a lot of heat. Yeah. Does he deserve as much heat as he's getting? <sighs> I don't think so, but I'm, I'm in the minority. Yeah, I am I, too. I mean, I, I agree with what Doug said because we said the same. Play a clean football game yeah. next week and then see what happens. You'll look up in the fourth quarter. You'll have a chance to win. They turned it over four times and they missed 15 tackles. They didn't play a clean football yeah. game. Play a clean football game. You'll have a chance to win. But, man, you know, like, I, if a play works, it's great. If a play doesn't work, oh, the Ridley end the around Ridley made end no around. sense. Oh it just gosh. made no sense. So that one sticks out yeah. big time, yeah. right? And get the play call in. Fourth and eight, delay a game. Oh, Can't happen. God. All right, so it's must-win time in Jacksonville, right? Maybe this, like, I don't know if we can lean on this anymore. We would say, hey, the Jags do well when the back's against the wall or it's must-win time. Yeah. Did a great job last year, yeah. one and two earlier this year. Well, I kind of thought Tampa was a – Almost a must-win game. This is, in reality, a must-win game. If they lose this game, they're not going to win the division. Yeah, I would say if they lose this game, they're not going to the playoffs. Yeah, but there's an outside that. chance, but... I would say not. they're out if they lose this game. Yeah, it's I mean, actually more important they win the Titans game than this game. I understand that, but you can't lose to... Listen, one of those teams is going to have nine wins. If we lose this game, do you think we're going to Tennessee <laughs> and winning? <laughs> no. By the I way, guess. this guy bought his kids a great Christmas present. They're going to Nashville yeah. to watch the Jags-Titans. That should be a lot of fun. Yeah, scarred for life, potentially. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well watch the epic collapse all in <laughs> Just take its it entirety. In. Probably take 20 it degrees, too. <laughs>
<laughs> Here we go. What do we got? I'll be in the press box. I know. <laughs> Four kids. The AFC South standings. Uh, eight and seven. Okay. Three-way tie, right? Vegas so you, is playing good football. Go Vegas. Yeah, that's actually a tougher game than it yeah. looked like a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And Tennessee, by the way, wasn't a pushover for Seattle last week. Oh. Tennessee can wreck the AFC South the next couple weeks. And that's going to be their emphasis. But the Jags actually have a a playoff clinching scenario this week. What do you got? If Exactly what happens last week, except the Jags win instead of a loss happens. Yeah. The Jags are in. They win the South. Wow. Now, listen, here's the thing with that. Santa was good to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Awesome. Team. I mean, he gave us two losses. He put it in our hands, and all we had to do from Santa is win that one game, and, and, and we didn't do it. So, um, yeah, we'll see. Hopefully the same thing can happen. Look, Vegas is playing good football, Tennessee. I, it, could, it could happen. This is what they're asking inside the building, I think, too, and we're asking outside the building. But what has happened to the Jags? And what we go to is like this 8-3. and three. Remember, the Jags got crushed by San Francisco. Look at that throw, huh? <laughs> the Jags got crushed by San Francisco. Yeah. But then they bounce back, and they beat the Texans and the Titans in yes. big games. Yes. And then it's fallen apart since then. Oh, yeah. So if you, if you could think of one thing, I mean, is it simply turnovers? Mm, but they missed a kick against the – they scored 31 against the Bengals. Yeah. They scored 27 even against the Browns. Yeah. It's now, so the last many, couple of weeks, their offense has stunk. You know, stunk. it's funny because there's different things in each of the it's games, kind of right? Is, yeah. So – in the end, did we overvalue that 8-3 and three mark? And in the end, when they played the big boys this year, what happened? They lost to Kansas City. A one and four, they, I think. Yeah, they lost to Baltimore. Um, San Francisco. They lost to San Francisco. Cincinnati. They lost to Cincinnati, and they beat Buffalo. Yeah. So, like you said, yeah, they're one and four. So, in the end, are they more of a is, – is, are they what we – are they a nine and eight, eight and nine type football I'll team? I'll tell you this, the last couple of weeks, if you watch Kansas City as well, have they figured out the Andy Reid, Doug Peterson scheme in the NFL? Because both offenses look very similar, not being able to get anything well, a done. A lot of quarterbacks this year have not put up the astronomical numbers that we've seen in years past. So I don't know if the defense have gotten more, uh, figured things out more or not, but it'll be interesting. You know who else is coming to town, by the way? Uh, 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 Shaquille Griffin. Shaq Griffin. You think he wants to stick it to the Jags? <laughs> and he's starting. You know who, whose job he took? C.J. Henderson. They benched C.J. Henderson for Shaq Griffin. Yeah. Uh, oh, good favor of the Jags. Didn't work out against Houston in week three. Now he's on to Carolina. Uh, we do have a drive of the day. We do. Uh, we're contractually no. obligated to show you. The drive of the day, driven by your local Ford dealers. All right, so it's really the only scoring drive. It's actually the drive that Trevor got hurt on. But this also highlights Evan Ingram. And okay. number 17 actually didn't have his best game. He fumbled a couple of mishaps. Yeah. But he also had 10 catches yes. in the football game. Yes. And it set up one of two touchdowns to Calvin Ridley. And Ridley got absolutely hammered on the touchdown catch. Oh, man, did he? Again, all inconsequential. But it is our drive of the day. And it leads us to Evan Ingram. Okay. There are a couple of things happening in Jacksonville, and this guy has just been awesome. And yes. he now has the third most catches in franchise history. The only player with more catches in a Jacksonville Jaguar uniform in a single season, Jimmy Smith. Yeah. 116 and 112. Yeah. Evans got 98. He actually might get there. I doubt it, but he might get there. I love what the guys brought to the team. I, I will say this again, and I, I, I don't mean to be entirely – negative and he's had an outstanding year and I think he's Pro Bowl deserving but it is there is a, a little bit of quietness to his 98 catch 98 yeah. catches and a lot of catches you know yeah but and I, I I wish we could get him down the field just a little bit more well I think he's but he's an, a great security blanket he's too. an important part yeah. to keep with the sticks right to set yes. up third and threes yes. and other things like that but to your point he can't really I don't know if he can impact a football game to win you the football right game. Right. He's and not Kelsey-like in that regard, but he, ha he does a great job doing his job, which more people on this Jaguars team need to do. And that's fair. And with Kirk out and, and, and Zay Jones, if he, for this week, if, he, if, if Zay doesn't go, Evan Ingram will catch another 10 balls this week. Probably. You they know. keep getting it to him. Yeah. Hey, when we come back, we have sunshine and rainbows. No, you don't. <laughs> did you really find some? We did. Well, yeah, we put a committee together. Should we show the people who are here? I mean, God bless these people. Yeah, I know. We should Thank show Thank you. We love you. As good folks here, man. I mean, Listen. these people. You know, well, we'll show, I guess we'll show them when we come back. We're showing all those people that came out, too. They're That's stopping the, over after seeing Deck the they're Chairs. They're coming over. Yeah, they're in the other parking lot. La, on their la, way. La, la. Hey, because we are here until 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. That's right, on Fox 30. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> 
This is the Action Sports Jags, Jags Report Live. Coming to you live from Sneakers. Sponsored by Farrah and Farrah, the exclusive entry law firm of the Jaguars. Uh, sunshine and rainbows. and uh, I'm so excited to see this. Well, how about Elijah Cooks? Okay. Not okay. bad. Right? Did a terrific job. Yeah. And then we didn't throw to him in the second <laughs> half. I don't know why. Like, he made three catches and they never went back to never him. Never went back. I think they're, tr- again, they were trying hard to get Ridley involved too uh, much. How about Joe Flacco and the Browns? Why would they be on our sunshine? Because they beat the Texans. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, Mari Cooper, big day, 265, Cleveland Browns franchise record. And how about our friend Calais Campbell and the Atlanta Falcons Thank knocking you, off Gardner Minshew and the Colts? And then, and then he, all he asked was Jacksonville to return the favor, and we didn't. And we did. We also had him in the building, by the we way. We did. He would have been a nice addition but, as and, well. And if you watch that game, especially the second half, he wrecked some of that game for the Colts yeah. in critical times. Yeah, I mean, listen, it, it would have been nice to have him in there. Deck the chairs out here in Jack's Beach. What is that and, contraption uh, right there, Brent? I think it's a Jeep, isn't it, or something? No? I don't, I don't know. know. I caught the end of it. I'm assuming that's Rudolph. a red-nosed reindeer. But. Rudolph, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to guess because I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. It's good about beer. that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm Brent Martin, Dan Hick and Jags Report live here at Sneakers in Can I, can I say Beach. something? Sure. I mean, you've been saying a lot already. but <laughs> there's, no, there's no job that's tougher in sport than being the quarterback of an NFL team. And it's amazing to me how many young athletes would love to play that position yeah. and how many young athletes train to play that position at younger ages than ever, right? Yeah. And they go to high school with the dream of making it to college. And if they make it to college... And Trevor Lawrence was born to be a quarterback. We watched him. We've chronicled. You've been to his hometown, Cartersville, Georgia. Won a natty at Clemson. Won a state championship in high school. I think he's going to win a Super Bowl. But I think, and I would love to be a fly on the wall around the Lawrence entourage to hear what is really being thought about as he goes through this season. Because... If you're part of the Lawrence entourage, it ain't Trevor's fault. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And so, and, and I think there's some truth to that. But we have some graphic presentations here that we want to show <laughs> the folks because this is Trevor, right? And if you're, if you're playing the game Operation and you touch poor Trevor on the ankle. You've been buzzing everything. If you touch him on the knee, if you touch him on the shoulder, if you touch him on the head, it buzzes red every time, yeah. the poor guy. How old do you have to be to know what this is, actually? Do folks know Operation in here? Well, I know yes, this Yes, they crowd. do. Well, yes, they do. How about the, do we have any the young kids? Do you know them? No, I, it was, <laughs> was a great a game. game. It was a good it game. Was a, I could get the breadbasket one. That was the only one I could get, though. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, he's been banged up, and that makes it harder. Now, is this a real picture or a photo? I think this is a real picture. Look at our guy's face. He's 40 years old. That's what this season has done to the poor guy. By the way, this is coming off concussion protocol, too. It's a violent game. It's a violent, tough game. It's a tough game. He's a tough dude as well. So, yeah, it's hard to play the position. Yeah. And And, and I will say one more thing statistically. I know he's not had a good year, right? 19 and 12, right? But guess what? He really hasn't had a good stretch, Dan. He was having a fine year until this stretch. Yeah, but guess who's thrown more interceptions than him? Josh Allen has. He's having a better stretch now. (laughs) Okay, yeah. By the way, he's playing great football, but he's... Pat Mahomes has thrown more interceptions than Trevor Lawrence and Jalen Hurts. Three of the best quarterbacks in the NFL have all had more picks than our guy this year. It's been a weird year for quarterbacks in the National Football League. It's been almost a reset year or come back down to reality year. We're not getting the 5,000 yards. Where's the 45 touchdown pass guy? Is yeah. he around this year? Doesn't look like it. We yeah. thought Tua might be tracking yeah. for that. That didn't really happen. Yeah. I will say this, though, about some of these quarterbacks, the ebbs and flows of the season. Josh Allen's playing excellent ball right now. Yes. Baker Mayfield, 10 touchdowns, one interception. Matthew Stafford, 12 touchdowns, one interception in December. My biggest criticism of maybe Trevor right now is you've got to play your better football right now, and he's actually not, right. whether it's because he's banged up or everything else it's around my, him. Bro, they're 0-4 in December. Yeah. Last year in October, they went 0-5. We're going to have 5 in December. This Sunday's game is the 31st. We have got to break that streak. We can't go 0-5 for the second year in a row in a, in a, a full month. One, one more example of uh, Lamar Jackson, by the way, is a quarterback that last two years we were talking about him being hurt. Now at this time you were talking about him in the MVP conversation. And, so it changes year to year. And any team in the NFL could have had Lamar Jackson in the draft and again this past offseason. He was there. The Atlanta Falcons, it almost like he wanted to go to Atlanta. Yeah. Right? And if the Atlanta Falcons had paid him that money 
and he was there, would they be six and eight right now? No, 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 no. no well, they'd Baltimore be a- probably would have matched anyway, but oh, <laughs> at least they could have. Yeah. Hey, when we come back, the Jags get the Carolina Panthers. Oh, dear. That should not scare you. But anything is scary right now. How good are the Panthers? Are they on the rise? Oh, no. Are they dangerous to Jacksonville? They shouldn't be. We'll be back. (laughs) Jags Report Live, live on Fox 30. Happy holidays, everybody, as we turn into the new year, 2024, when we get playoff football in Jacksonville is the big question. This is the Action Sports Jags, Jags Report Live. Coming to you live from Sneakers. Sponsored by Farrah and Farrah, the exclusive entry law firm of the Jaguars. Obviously, there's nothing positive out of getting your <laughs> foot, but, I mean, Indy loss, Houston loss, still in first place in AFC South. Obviously, it doesn't look pretty right now, but, I mean, we still got we still got opportunities to, to turn this thing around. We- well, we got thank you notes going out all over the AFC South, and yeah. maybe another one this week or two would be nice and help the Jags win the AFC South. Welcome back, everybody. Jags Report Live, live from Sneakers in Jack's Beach, and there's a look at Jack's Beach outside on a beautiful evening uh, here in Jacksonville. Jags will play their home finale coming up this Sunday at the bank, a place they have not been very good. Welcome back, Brent Martin, Dan Hicken. One thing about the very not very good stuff, yeah. they've played tough competition at home. Yeah. This one would not fall under tough competition i mean my only hope is that carolina gave it their all sunday they played their best game of the year and now they're like okay we tried we what more do we have (laughs) i I mean that's that's kind of what i'm hinging on i would like to see the jaguars play a good football game though if they are capable of winning the south and going to the playoffs and being the type of team that we saw earlier this year the jags football team we thought they'd be they should be able to walk on the field and win 30 to 10 over the panthers there's no but question the jags football team we've seen hasn't been that way uh, up at carolina there's a lot of question about bryce young man i listen i was on board with them taking bryce young first because he was so good at bama but when you see him in the nfl he is a small dude man but he had his best game against green bay but against at, at alabama he was money he's a playmaker and i think that's what carolina fell in yeah. love with right you saw him make plays so even with his size he'd be able to be a playmaker in the nfl at that quarterback position like we see well carolina just hasn't been the case now they're not a very good football team right they don't have a lot of depth they don't have a lot around him they've had to change coaches around him already yeah but they got good play last week and that brings up our keys to the game your keys to the game sponsored by greenway kia well, uh, yeah, they got to play with an attitude. We'd like to see that. You know, I, I the felt, Las Vegas Raiders played with an attitude yeah, yesterday. I Bring felt, that. I felt like the Jags just didn't have the verve. Like I saw in the Dolphins game, Tyreek Hill jumping up and down after making a yeah. catch. Man, I need somebody with some fire and some yelling and some screaming and some pumped up. Even Mahomes and Kelsey yeah. was running over people, even if it didn't work. At least yeah. they brought that energy, right? Uh, you got to win the, tur- the turnover stuff is just ridiculous. Now, we know how the game works. Yeah. And how about this one? How about one for the fans? Yeah. I mean, this team has been connected nicely nicely to the fan base yes. over the last couple of years. Yeah. But right now, there's no confidence around here in, in the Jaguars. And the home schedule has been kind of miserable the way they've performed. So a win going out would be nice. Because if it's not a win, it's going to be one of the worst losses in franchise history. Well, I think you're right about that. Listen, Carolina, for all, as well as they played against Green Bay, and they had a chance against Green Bay, they just ran out of time. They've not been very good. They've got two wins this year. They've got a quarterback that nobody's sure about. They've they fired their coach. They've got an owner who's, who's a little off, to say, to put it nicely, and David Tepper. So uh, I'm not real sold. They got 21 sacks this year, Brent, the lowest in the NFL. 21 sacks total, And man. they've allowed 43, I think, yeah. to Bryce Young, and that was in one less game than they've even played. Welcome back, DJ Chark, a familiar yeah. face. You mentioned guys like C.J. Henderson yeah. and uh, Shaq Griffin, but uh, they will see DJ Chark, who had a very Great nice game. game. Yeah, he had two touchdowns, day. I think six for 90-some yards. Yeah. Uh, Adam Thielen's also a decent receiver. Look, they're not loaded at the receiver spot. We know that. But, again, this is a game that the Jags got to step up, play like they're capable <laughs> of playing, and beat a two-win team. Guys, they got two wins, and I'm not confident. That's on paper. The Jags are so much better Ugh. than Carolina. But we saw what happened last week and in the NFL week to week. The Panthers have actually put up a pretty good fight against a lot of teams most of the year, and we expect them to do it again on Sunday. When we come back, are you oh. full from all the uh, Christmas festivities? Yes. We're not. No. We talk more NFL and Jags right after this. Jags Report Live 
Live from Sneakers yeah. in Jack's Beach. There are our friends that have made the show out. Once again, good to have you out here on a Tuesday night. This is the Action Sports Jags, Jags Report Live. Coming to you live from Sneakers. Sponsored by Farrah and Farrah, the exclusive entry law firm of the Jaguars. Man, the season not over, and that's the thing. Own it. Feel it. I'm hurting. I'm hurting. I'm going to be watching film on what I need to do better. Yeah, you're not alone. I'm Jacksonville's hurting, hurting too, We're Josh hurting. Allen. Everybody's hurting. A painful performance yeah. for the Jacksonville Jaguars. But here on Jags Report Live, our favorite part of the show. This is my not favorite sure. part of the show. We're here with all of our fans, the people who love me and you the most right here. <laughs> yes. yeah. yeah, right next to us. Oh, look at these. Are we loaded. actually kick French them pounds. out so they don't jump in. Oh, this is going to be it's good. It's like chili cheese Oh, fries. Yeah. I like this. Proper. You're going to like this a lot. Thanks for the napkin. Yeah. And we'll get our What's on the Menu segment going. All Fred right. Martin, no Dan Hicken uh, here at Sneakers in Jack's Beach. The Baltimore Ravens crushed the 49ers. That looked like a clash of Super Bowl contenders. And, well, it didn't matter because the Baltimore Ravens are really, really good right now. Lamar Jackson maybe won the MVP last night. Most people are talking about. Are the Ravens the best team in the NFL now? Did they prove it? You know what's interesting? We've had upsets on Monday Night Football like seven or eight games eight, in a row. Eight in a row. Including our Jags, who were 10-point yeah. favorites against That's Cincinnati. That's a wild stat. But this makes the postseason tournament fun. A lot of people thought San Francisco was just going to cruise to the Super Bowl. I don't think so, man. I think it's going to be like one of the great playoff seasons in NFL history. I think there's going to be a lot of upsets, a lot of good games. Baltimore proved it, but... You don't want to necessarily be the hot team right now, man, because it's week to week, isn't it, it? Well, listen, if you think anything's going to be the same as it is right now on February, like, 11th or 12th, mm -hmm. we'll just show you the Jags 22 days ago. They yeah. were 8-3 and three and playing for the top seed. I mean, that's not how the NFL works. Mm -hmm. They did get a lot of help, the Jags did, though. And the Colts, you know, they're just an okay football team. I think this stuff does even out. It was yeah. tough to see, like, the Colts running the table, winning 11, the Texans without Stroud doing that. Right. So it's settled down to where the Jags still have a chance, but they got a lot of help. Yeah, and, and listen, it's right there for them. It'll be interesting to see what they're able to do. Can they just play a good football game, Brent? That's all I ask. Just play a good football team against a bad football team. Remember, they got a lot of help last year down the stretch, too, yeah. from the Titans, who collapsed. I don't want to be the 2022 Titans. No, well, the Jags are on their way. Now, the Titans will have a big say in who wins the AFC South or who goes to the playoffs from the South. They play the Texans this week. Uh -huh. Stroud could be back. And then, of course, everybody eyes that Nashville game. If it has to come down to that game, mm -hmm. there will be a lot of nervous folks in Jacksonville. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm eating you okay? a very crunchy, good French fry. That's and good. that was tremendous. As long as, um, as long as you're not choking. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, Mike Vrabel like would Jags. like. <laughs> that would be ironic. Mike Vrabel <laughs> wants to wreck a couple seasons in the AFC South. But again, one of the things that we pointed out in this show is that you don't want to lose six in a row going into next year because then you don't fix things. Like Tennessee didn't fix things. Yeah, they did. Hey, know? 24 teams in the NFL are still alive. 24? You might think it's a pillow fight. But the National Football League loves this. Pete Rozelle's Scenarios smiling. galore. Parody galore. Yeah. Looks like a lot of average teams right now. Uh -huh. But there are a lot of teams that can get in the dance and make a run. It's kind of fun. Like you said, it should be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. And, and hey, the odds to go to the Super Bowl right now, mm -hmm. I think are wide open. It might look Baltimore, San Fran, or Philadelphia, maybe Detroit. It could be six seeds going to the Super Bowl in the National Football League. When I'm we come Goffin back like that, he did it. He did six seed. Yeah, yeah, wild card teams have done it. When we come back from Seekers in Jack's Beach, Jags report live. Dan continues to eat. Try this and one. we continue to talk. That looks like a good one, by the way. We continue to talk about the Jaguars and the defensive side of the football. It's coming up next. This is the Action Sports Jags, Jags Report Live. Coming to you live from Sneakers. Sponsored by Farrah and Farrah, the exclusive entry law firm of the Jaguars. We can practice great uh, every week. Um, when, you know, when the other team's not out there, we can be perfect during the week. If we're not, you know, getting the results when it matters, it doesn't matter. So, uh, you know, we got to put it all together. Poor Evan Ingram, man. He tries to explain it to us each and every week during yeah. this losing streak, and it's hard to come up with answers. Welcome back to Sneakers in Jack's Beach. Jags Report Live here on a Tuesday edition with the holiday. Hope you're having a fantastic week despite the Jaguars' losing streak. Brent Martin, Dan Hicken. We, our tackle tracker this week is not 
counting the missed tackles, right? <laughs> Just good, the tackles. That's actually what we should have highlighted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your Tackle Tracker, sponsored by IHRS, tackling hair loss. I wish you told me that before the show. Yeah, I know. Uh, Foyer Lewican, by the way, with a dozen. He had like nine at halftime or something. And uh, now 160 for the year. He's second in the NFL, Ooh. so he's chasing All right. uh, that third straight season, by the way. Hey, the Gator Bowl, Tax Slayer Gator Bowl, uh, at the bank on Friday at noon. It's obviously a big 48-hour stretch. They've got to get the field ready for the Carolina game on Sunday. One o'clock, of course. That came on CBS 47, uh, I believe, here in Jacksonville on Action Sports Shacks, of course. And then look at these guys, Josh Allen, Luke Fortner, Kentucky guys out at practice today for the Wildcats. And yesterday it was Tyler Shatley at Clemson stopping by and saying hello. We'll see if Trevor Lawrence or um, Travis Etienne make their way to a Tigers practice. And by the way, Clemson having their pep rally out here at the beach on Thursday. And so Thursday night, 6 o'clock, starting at 6, you come out to sneakers as they welcome the Clemson alumni. So big party here for the uh, Clemson folks as they get ready to battle Kentucky on Friday. But Thursday night here at sneakers at the beach, 6 o'clock, come out and have some fun. Yeah, it's bowl season, so come on out to sneakers in Jack's Beach and watch all uh, the bowl games and NFL games. When we come back, the dog. The dog again. How did uh, Aspen do around Christmas? Doesn't matter. Better than the Jags? We'll find out when we come back. Jags report live Pretty on dog. Fox 30. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. This is the Action Sports Jags. Jags report live. Coming to you live from Sneakers. Sponsored by Farrah & Farrah. The exclusive entry law firm of the Jaguars. Yeah. There they are, yeah, man. Yeah. Get the biggest round of applause of the day. Hard. They get our game ball. Yes. We give out game balls. If we did, you guys would all get it. 100%. We need a lot of them. We do. Happy holidays. Welcome back to Sneakers and Jack's Beach. Jags report live. And uh, it's really become the Jags versus Aspen here yeah. in December. Yeah, the dog stinks. <laughs> Jags have been worse. I don't know. Can we get, I don't know what kind of Christmas cheer Aspen is going to bring us. I do know that. Aspen wasn't around this weekend in the office, so yeah. that was a good thing. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, let's find out. Aspen, sponsored by Subaru of Jacksonville on Atlantic, the right choice for your next vehicle. Uh huh. Well, listen, I mean, there weren't too many answers that Aspen was going to get right on no. this game. <laughs> I noticed Aspen often goes to the middle one. Though. Yeah, I think so. yeah, that's a tendency there. Yeah, that's a, a tendency. tendency. Jags a tendency. don't tendency. go to the middle field enough, man. No. <laughs> <laughs> Jags social coming up Friday, 7 30 on Fox 30 with Olivia and Chandler. Uh, hey, a couple of news and notes yeah. here on a Tuesday coming okay. off this game. First, Trevor Lawrence, AC sprain in his shoulder, probably will practice this week. Mm -hmm. Doug seemed to be favorable toward him playing on Much Sunday. more than in the previous weeks, right? Yeah. So I, I think that's good news. Listen, here's some really good news. Cam Robinson. Yeah, we might get this guy back, and they need Cam Robinson, which is odd because, you know, <laughs> They're six and two with Cam Robinson. I think six and one. Six and one? I think six and one's oh, a record. I mean, man. it's a weird thing. Like, yeah. remember, there was time we thought they couldn't win without Zay Jones. Right. Now can they win without Christian Kirk? We're but searching. Cam Robinson has yeah. been kind of the guy, and he's going to get Carolina, so his record might go up. <laughs> he's a good run blocker, too. And he maybe, brings attitude, yeah. man. He brings energy. Like, the Jags lack that in some of their leadership. They're quiet. He's going to go get in your face yes. and play Nasty. Yeah. And the Jags need a little bit of that. They do. Also, Anton Harrison, you, you can criticize the Jags draft, yes. but this is one you have to give them props for. Correct. Because Jawan Taylor's not having a good year. He would have cost $80 million. At the back end of the first round, they picked Anton Harrison, and I think this kid's a good player. He is He's a good done player. a nice job. He's okay with the back injury, by the way, is the, the news today. I don't even want to you know, start talking about next year till later, but if Cam Robinson doesn't come back, I think there's a chance 
Anton Harrison's your left tackle next year. He I could don't be. Know. We'll he see. could be. Remember, yeah. he was playing a new position yeah. at right tackle this he year. He had a good season. He should. He's. He's the bright spot oh, in the draft class. Can we see the bank like that one more time? Can oh. we see the bank? I mean, we're just asking for it. Oh. And the fans have delivered. They have. And it's been, but I don't like this window of opportunity all of a sudden feels like it's shrinking. Yeah. And it was supposed to be open through at least the end of this year. Then we'll see what happens. It hasn't been gritty or pretty. In fact, it's <laughs> no. been more of another word that rhymes with those two and begins with an SH. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank what? You. I didn't say it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for not saying that. No. Listen, back in the control room, we kept you on your toes the entire show. Yeah. It took until the final 45 seconds yeah. to almost, almost have to hit the button. We didn't do it. For Dan Hicken. Mm -mm. Uh, well, we'll see what the Jags can do this Sunday. Obviously, a lot going into <laughs> this one. Getting guys back, maybe even a Zay Jones. They actually are very healthy outside of Christian Kirk, maybe Zay Jones. Yeah. And their quarterback. Change everything you do. Come up with something different. We got to find a way to win. All right. Uh, we'll see you Sunday <laughs> at the bank. Thanks for hanging with us here at Sneakers. Yeah. Jack Jags report live. Couple more. The Hardy. <laughs> to go here in this 2023 season. Thanks for watching the Action Sports Jags. Jags report live. Coming to you live from Sneakers. Sponsored by Farrah and Farrah. The exclusive entry law firm of the Jaguars.